Good morning, and welcome to the 13th annual Duke CIFAR uh, Research Fall Retreat. We're trying some new experiments today based on, uh, in large part, on some of the responses we got to the, uh, the survey. So this is one of them. We decided to change our formatting a little bit. And uh, again, if you haven't read it in the, in the uh, program, the posters are up on the sixth floor. Uh, one of the things that we always got comments about was that uh, there was not enough room to kind of mill about amongst the posters and there was lighting problems, et cetera. So we decided to try this and uh, there are pluses and minuses and we look forward to getting your feedback. So I want to spend the next 20 minutes just giving you an update of where we've been, where we're going, and where we currently are uh, with regard to the Duke CIFAR, and then entertain any questions. Uh, as we go through each time, uh, the chronology grows a little bit. Our first award uh, uh, beginning in 2005, and uh, year 13 began uh, July 1st of this year. This is our base funding. Remember, NIH gives us a, uh, an update every year of how much HIV AIDS related research Duke is receiving. This is determined by OAR. And uh, we started off and bounced around quite a bit, and there was ARA and some other things, but I think we're now uh, seeing some constant growth. And this is actually uh, for fiscal year 2016, we've passed this magic uh, threshold of $40 million. Uh, it's magic from the standpoint that we are a tier one CIFAR right now, which means we get a million and a half dollars total uh, per year. And uh, of course, indirects are taken out of that then. Uh, if uh, we can, uh, on the year that we, we recompete, uh, maintain a threshold above $40 million, uh, then we will become a tier two CIFAR, which means that uh, instead of 1.5, we'll be uh, down on the uh, uh, 2.25 million, so it will give us much more money to invest in uh, small grants or recruitments, et cetera. So uh, again, keep up the good work. Uh, we, ha we will be, as I'll talk about shortly, we'll be writing the competitive renewal uh, about a year and a half from now. So uh, uh, we need to make sure that we uh, maintain this, so I encourage you to get in some, uh, some good R01 applications between now and then. We are, these are the, the CIFAR co-sponsoring institutes. They all kick into the CIFAR pot. Uh, and the ones with asterisks are the ones that uh, uh, are in our funded research base. So there are a couple of them we're still missing. Uh, but I think we have some active uh, applications going into NHLBI, NIA, et cetera. Uh, so we hope to, again, diversify this portfolio over time. This is from 2015, but uh, again, this, I think, illustrates the the, uh, that we are very NIAID centric, but we're looking to add on other institutes, and I think we've been doing that in the past, and, and look forward to, again, uh, maybe between now and the competitive renewal, becoming even more diverse in uh, the funding portfolio. There have been a lot of changes over the past year to our organizational chart that I'm sure you're all aware of. We have a new president, a new chancellor, a new dean, who we'll be hearing from uh, uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, and we've, uh, with, within the CIFAR itself, we've remained fairly steady, but we have introduced, uh, uh, or we're going to be onboarding two new scientific working groups that I'll mention in just a second. Our strategic partners have also changed quite a bit. All the ones that are shaded are ones that are new, maybe not over the last year, but the last two years. Uh, and so again, uh, the uh, DTMI, the Margola Center, Pathology, uh, Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, School of Medicine, obviously, uh, uh, we forgot to change that one, where is it? Oh, no, as the dean, here's Joe acting as the Department of Medicine chair, uh, and then uh, ob uh, And again, there's an acting director, should be shaded in Randy Kramer for DGHI. So a lot of changes in our partnerships, but I think all for the good. And as you all know, uh, we've managed to secure Mary Klotman for an hour, uh, who will uh, speak to us as the keynote speaker today. And uh, again, we all look forward to that. I think Mary's been a constant friend of the Duke CIFAR, uh, and I think we're the only CIFAR that has as their dean uh, a, an HIV AIDS investigator. So uh, we're very pleased with this. Our year 12 activities, uh, we were very, very busy. Uh, key recruitments, retentions, uh, a lot of increases in our core utilizations, uh, small grant awards. We had uh, several NIH uh, administrative supplements that uh, were awarded. Uh, we continued with our chalk talks and, and CIFAR sponsored seminars. We've, on, we've undergone the retirement of our initial two scientific working groups 
and Rising from the Ashes are, are two related groups that uh, we will introduce to you. Uh, we did have two kind of reviews. We had a biannual review. Every two years, our external advisory committee meets and gives us a real critical review. Uh, and then we were site visited by the NIH uh, CIFAR steering committee. And uh, again, both of these reviews were highly positive, but again, pointed out some things that we can improve and, and we'll take those to heart. The year 11-12 recruitments, uh, again, I think we introduced some of this. Uh, Lance Okeke, Todd uh, Bradley, and Wilton Williams in year 11 received support. Uh, Megan Hutchko, Gita Sinija, and Matt Kelly, and, and Ginny Fuda uh, in year 12, uh, again, were, were supported. We want to offer congratulations to the, uh, the uh, Biostatistics and Computational Biology Corps, uh, Cliverne Chan and Shen Chao Chung, uh, together with Mike Hudgens over at UNC, edited a book, Quantitative Methods in HIV AIDS Research, and uh, was, was quite a uh, remarkable achievement. Uh, I may w also want to mention that uh, with mixed feelings, uh, Cheng is going to be leaving the Duke CIFAR. He's accepted a position at the FDA, and uh, I think it's a, a, a real step up for Cheng. We wish him well, but again, we will miss him. One of the biggest uh, activities, at least from our standpoint, was to get feedback from you all through the, uh, the 2017 CIFAR survey. And I want to share with you some of the results in this. And I think uh, if we're able to do so, I'd like to post, uh, where is it, this tome, uh, which is the result of the, CIFAR, uh, the survey, I'd like to post it on the CIFAR website because you should all see all the types of responses that we got. I think we got, our total response rate was about 39%, which while it's not 100%, I'm told that 39% is actually a respectable response rate. And uh, so again, we're very well pleased. And thank you all again uh, for providing extraordinarily val valuable feedback, uh, not only in ranking things, but also your comments. A lot of you took, uh, took the time out to give us written comments uh, that, uh, again, uh, have helped us uh, quite a bit. Let's go over a few of these. Your overall ranking in CIFAR, I think you like us. Uh, so a lot very good, some excellent. We could do better. So let us know how we can uh, uh, actually do, uh, uh, do better in, uh, in whatever uh, aspects that you, you deem re uh, reasonable. Uh, level of communication from the CIFAR, this is something we always fight with. We want, we want to spare you all of these ridiculous emails that could go through. And so we filter a little bit. We try uh, to bother you only when we think it's something of critical importance. Otherwise, we put things on the, on the on the, uh, on the website and let you look there. And so I think we're not overwhelming you. I'm glad that too much is only 1%. Uh, we'll lower that to zero if possible. Uh, all the C CIFAR cores that are utilized during the past years, again, I'm really pleased with the amount of, uh, of uh, interaction with uh, and utilization of all the CIFAR cores. Uh, so I think, uh, again, we want to look to, to bring up some of the others, but I think that this is a very reasonable distribution of, of uh, activities uh, amongst the cores. How useful is the information at the CIFAR website? Some people don't use it, but most of you said it's quite useful or very useful. Uh, again, uh, we're always open to suggestions for, uh, uh, for improvements. And I think the website, uh, there were some comments that the website should be, we should make it available to uh, phones and, and uh, iPads. I think it is, right? We have a Twitter account and yeah, okay, we have one. I don't think it's, it's used very much, but we're, we're cognizant of that and we'll try and, uh, try and improve on that. How many, in the past three years, how many CIFAR retreats? So it looks like uh, there are a lot of you that uh, are keyed into our CIFAR retreats. Some of you we need to, uh, uh, again, maybe some of you are newcomers uh, participating in today's retreat. What's your overall ranking in the retreat? Again, very good to excellent uh, and good. A couple of fairs, but Again, I think it's a very positive response. And then we'd like to know what sessions are most interesting. We've kept this kind of general format of director's overview, new recruits, networking and poster, oral abstracts, keynote address, and then strategic partnerships. And I think they're all fairly well received. Uh, so I think uh, you're telling us that the format seems to be quite good. We're always open to changing the format, but again, it's, 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 it's been moderately successful in the past, so I think uh, we're going to try and stick with it. In addition to the fall retreat, what, would you be interested in a uh, CIFAR-wide uh, uh, spring event? We've mentioned this several times. We've struggled with this. I think overwhelming you, you're saying, yes, let's have one. Let's make it different from the CIFAR retreat we're having now. Uh, but we're, we've kind of stumbled on this. So we, 
we, we need somebody to step up and, and uh, really take charge of this. And uh, if you have a specific interest, uh, we're very interested in, in, in listening to you. We'd love to have something in spring of 2018. Uh, so don't be shy. Uh, how your, your research fits the funding priorities of the NIH. Uh, many of you say it fits very well. Uh, some aren't sure and some moderately well, but the follow-up was how, uh, how prepared do you feel you are to frame your research to address these po uh, possibilities? Again, I think uh, uh, we're doing our job, hopefully, in helping you to, uh, to address some of these. We encourage all CIFAR investigators to acknowledge uh, our P30. Again, there, there are people that track this and they want to see uh, as things are published, uh, are they acknowledging the Duke CIFAR? And most of these are, uh, again, small grant awardees. But we want to remind you that, uh, again, if, if the CIFAR has participated in manuscript review or statistical support or sample access, consultation, review of grant applications, uh, uh, participation in CIFAR events like chalk talks, things like that, please, uh, if, if uh, uh, you do that and publish, again, don't be shy about uh, uh, acknowledging the Duke CIFAR. It is a metric that NIH uses. Uh, how useful is the email uh, the CIFAR let, listserv? Again, I think we're doing okay there. And so, uh, again, we'll try and post this. Kelly, I think that we said that we should be able to post this on the website and make it available to all of you because there are a lot of uh, questions, in-depth questions that I think uh, you might want to look, look over and review. This is a slide that we've used for the past couple years, and I think it had a, a lot of bullet points before. Most of those have disappeared, but we're still reminded from our uh, uh, NIH site visit and our external advisory committee that we need to do a little bit better on uh, the proportion of publications that cite the CIFAR. So let's be cognizant of that, and, and when we have opportunities to do that, we, we truly appreciate it. Plans for CIFAR th year 13, uh, we will issue a fall and spring small grant RFA, Core B, the developmental core will do that. In fact, the, uh, the fall uh, release of the RFA will occur before the end of this month, probably within the next week. Right, Kelly? We'll continue our key recruitment efforts. We were very busy with recruits last year. We want to maintain that, uh, uh, that kind of co-recruitment with uh, various departments and strategic partners. Uh, we're gonna, we've we will continue our chalk talks and special seminars, many of which we, we uh, co-sponsor with uh, uh, DHVI. We do want to uh, plan for the spring event in Q2 of 2018, and so we need some we need to get going on this sooner rather than later if this is going to happen. Uh, and we will be onboarding, and we have begun onboarding the two new working groups. One is Biomedical Prevention Scientific Working Group, uh, led by Amy Cornelli and uh, Mary McKellar, and a PREPS, PREP Summit. You'll be hearing about this later on today. And then the AIDS Malignancy uh, Scientific Working Group, uh, co-chaired by Gita Sunija and, and Mika Luftig. And then uh, we have our competitive renewal that uh, for 2020 that is due uh, July of 2019. And so we actually begin preparing for this uh, long, far ahead of time. Last time we prepared uh, a, 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 not a penultimate draft, but a clean draft for our external advisory committee December before uh, the uh, J July submission, sent it to our external advisory committee and then met with them in February. And it was really productive because uh, obviously the, the, uh, the fruit was in the, uh, the uh, uh, impact score of 13 that we got. So we want to take that, uh, that lesson and, and, uh, and do that over again and hopefully uh, maybe get less than 13. <laughs> so we still need your help to improve the overall effectiveness of the Duke CIFAR. Uh, again, this value added uh, uh, moniker is something that NIH looks for, they're looking for uh, examples, specific examples of how the CIFAR helped you, not just supported a, a small grant application, but how in your day-to-day -day, uh, operations uh, CIFAR uh, uh, was responsible for value-added aspects. Uh, we're always looking for suggestions of seminar and chalk talk uh, speakers and topics. And again, don't be shy about making suggestions. We have funds to support these. Uh, and suggest areas for future CIFAR retreats and the new spring event. I'll keep we keep hearing about the spring event. We really, I want to try and stir up some enthusiasm for this because I think it really could be uh, quite nice. Uh, we're always looking for potential new CIFAR members, and I think many of you have been very uh, proactive in, in sending us names or, or, or identifying people for us, so we've added to that. Um, always looking at uh, how we can become more involved in community outreach. I think we've, we've taken another step in the last couple years, and I think we can do even better yet. 
And then how can CIFAR better serve the clinical and basic research communities here at Duke? So uh, uh, we're always open to suggestion and, uh, and we listen to your suggestions quite, uh, uh, quite uh, seriously. So again, lastly, just acknowledge that uh, uh, support of the Duke CIFAR visibility is everything. Uh, NIH looks at this and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the study sections that review competitive renewals look at this. So uh, it is a very important metric. We started about nine years ago an annual uh, CIFAR Director's Award that came out of my pocket, not a discretionary fund or from NIH, we couldn't do it, I don't look good in stripes, so it comes out of my checking account. But it was to really recognize someone who most significantly uh, contributed added value to the Duke CIFAR over the past year. Uh, so it's a $150 gift certificate to Nana's, uh, courtesy of my wife and I. Uh, so this year, uh, the winner is Lizzie Knippler. Lizzie, she was, I really give her sole, sole credit for uh, creation of the CIFAR membership survey, which has been such a fabulous tool, uh, and, and also not only a survey, but analysis of the responses. If you don't know uh, Lizzie, she's a DH, uh, DGHI uh, research assistant, uh, coordinator of the CIFAR SBS Corps, and a Duke graduate with a bachelor's degree in global health and public policy studies. Enjoy the dinner. Congratulations. <laughs> And special thanks, as we always uh, are, are dependent on our two uh, uh, assistants here, Kelly Plunk and Mary Orris, uh, for organizing all of this. And uh, if you have any complaints, go to them. <laughs> all right. I have a little time for questions, if there are any questions before we go on. No? OK. Uh, so. I'm going to sub for our developmental core directors. Uh, Herman Statz is out of town, and we had Sally Permar all teed up, and then she realized over the weekend that she had a lecture schedule for today. So Sally's going to join us uh, later on the retreat, but I'm going to be a poor substitute and just take you through a very brief update on uh, uh, the developmental core and then introduce uh, speakers for the first session. This is uh, actually, all this is contained in your, your booklet, so I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing this. I just want to highlight it here that some of the, uh, the new awards that came, uh, the small pilot grants uh, to Megan Hutchko, to Gerald Bloomfeld, uh, and also we did a uh, kind of a, a mixed RFA with MedEx, and so that was awarded to uh, Ginny Fuda and Joel Collier. Again, all in your, your book, you can see more about it. Uh, the CIFAR Administrative Supplements, we were very fortunate this year to, to have several of these funded. Uh, the, uh, the faculty support, i.e. retention uh, or recruitment, uh, Gita Sunisha, Megan Hutchko, Ginny Fuda, and Matt Kelly. And then uh, one of the metrics uh, is a return on investment that NIH likes to use. So how much money was invested in, in someone maybe through recruitment or a small, small grant award, and then how much money did they bring in return, i.e. what grants resulted from that. And here's just a partial listing of uh, grants awarded in 2017 uh, to Jeannie Fuda, to Dave Murdoch and Christina Mead, Susanna Negi, David, uh, and then some of the publications that have resulted from uh, uh, CIFAR pilot awards. Uh, Maria Blasi, Dorothy Dow, Matt Kelly, Christina Mead, several times, uh, Susanna Negi, Lance O'Keke, David, several times, and Sherry Tao. Uh, 